Hello, everyone, and welcome to part three of Salvage Priority List. In this last section, we will identify the next steps for the creation of a priority list and the most important data and information that should be added to the priority list. To recap, therefore, the first step is the one dedicated to the choice of the artworks that must be included in the list. Identifying the artworks, although it is the main and essential step for the creation of a priority list, is not an exhaustive activity. In fact, it needs to be completed with some steps that can make res rescue operations in the event of an emergency faster and more effective. So the second step for the creation of a priority list is to identify and assess all third party loans located within the museum, both short term and long term. In fact, it is important to consider that an emergency could occur at a time when artworks loaned from third parties are present within the museum areas. How do I react in this case? Am I required to ensure the security of third party artworks as well? It is essential to remember that each loan requires a specific responsibility for the conservation and the safeguarding of the artworks. Indeed, during the loan phase, museums, archives and libraries must sign special contracts which state that they will take care and they will safeguard the artworks that will be loaned. So for this reason, it will be important to always check the loan agreements and verify that they take into account the aspects related to safety and salvaging in case of an emergency. It will be good to evaluate in agreement with the lender which are the best procedures for securing the land who works in event of an emergency. So how do you behave in case of temporary exhibitions? How do you prioritize the, if the museum where um, you work organizes several temporary exhibitions during the year or even works only with temporary exhibition and does not have a permanent collection on display? It will be essential for each temporary exhibition that the museum creates a specific priority list that takes into account the priority works of the museum as well as the artworks that are on loan at that time. The priority list, therefore, is a document which may undergo variation over time and which should guarantee a good level of flexibility and adaptation to specific situations. The third step for the production of a priority list is to analyze the security and identify risks and threats to the artworks. It is, in fact, necessary to identify for each artwork included in the priority list which are the ma major uh, vulnerabilities and consequently which are the risks to which it is most exposed. This assessment largely depends on the materials from which the artworks are made. Depending on the material, the artworks will be vulnerable to different threats. So the main threats to analyze in this phase are fire, water and climatic var variation. So for each of these threats, it will be necessary to identify the materials that are most vulnerable because they are flammable or they are 
hygrometric or particularly exposed to climatic variations. This evaluation is important because it could lead to identifying different priority lists for different scenarios. So the works to be saved for a fire can be different from those that need to be saved in case of a flood. And this largely depends on the materials that constitute the artworks themselves. I'll give you an example in the next slide. Think of a museum which, among others, keeps a small stone statuette. In the event of flooding, this work may not be among the first to be evacuated. In fact, the museum could decide to focus on paper works or canvas works that will be significantly, significantly damaged by water. The next step for the production of a priority list is to draw the lists. Only at this point, in fact, with all of the information and data that have been collected, it is possible to create a proper priority list. Once it is completed, these lists must be printed and included inside the emergency plan. At this point, once the priority works have been established, it may be useful to proceed with the rearrangement of deposits. In this phase, in fact, it might be useful to organize, to arrange the deposits uh, according to priorities. One could decide to place all the priorities in one room or to spread the risk and spread them over many different areas of the museum. In any case, it is important that all the artworks included in the priority list are easily reachable and accessible. In the event of an emergency, in fact, it is better not to have to use ladders, forklifts or other bulky equipment. Another important element is to create a visual code within the deposits in order to quickly identify the different priorities in the rooms. So for this purpose, a color code can be used or different shapes identifying priorities for different risk scenarios and so on. Finally, it is essential to create record cards for each works. The record card must be linked to the artworks in some way so that by picking up an object, all the information available and useful for its evacuation is immediately available. Another fundamental issue is the sensitivity of the information that is included in the priority lists. The priority lists, in fact, contain sensitive information that can be very important for the security of a museum. And for this reason, they must be kept secret. This information could, in fact, be used for a theft of the structure as they contain all the information on the artworks and how to reach them and how to dismantle them. Another key element that is pointed out in this publication is planning the evacuation and removal of the artworks for, from the, their place of origin. It is essential to add basic information for the handling and packaging of the works to the list in order to make it possible for everyone to carry out these procedures in the event of an emergency. So it is necessary to enter the procedures for dismantling the work uh, from its support, the materials necessary for packaging and transport, and the possible escapes, um, escape routes through which the artwork can be transported. 
As far as the materials are concerned, they must be available in the warehouse near the works for which they are to be used. As regards the selection of escape routes, on the other hand, it is important to think of all of the possibilities, taking into consideration that in the event of an emergency, you may not be able to use lifts, freight elevators, or escalators. Finally, it is necessary to plan in advance a safe deposit where the evacuated works can be transported in case of emergency. Planning in advance also allows the museum to select the procedures, the areas where to convey the materials and the characteristics of the deposits it themselves with the body that manages the deposit. It is also essential to stipulate a contract that allow you to take advantage of the deposit even with very, very little notice. That marks the end of this lesson. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of the course.